back. Well, this is Doug with Rusty Wrench Garage. And if you watched the last video, well, next to the last, one of the last videos, uh, you seen that we put a motor in there that had been sitting in a barn for like 20 plus years. We just slapped it in the car and uh, took it out and raced it. So, let me show you a video of how it did. Okay, so as you can see, uh, run like 1170. The car was running 1040s. Now we're running 1170. And you've seen how it left the line. I mean, it left the line like, I mean, like we was going to the grocery store. So the deal is, we knew, well, let me just get you in here and show you. As you can see, the car is. Uh, Setting back up, and there's the transmission. And you're thinking, oh, the transmission went bad. No, no, it wasn't the transmission, but the converter. So, we're going to make a converter change. This was the old one. This is the new one. We got a new one from FTI, Competition Converters and Transmissions. Hey, guys, it's not cheating. It's competitive edge. Okay, so what had happened is my old motor, the 496, which the 496 stroker, uh, it had a lot of low end torque. So I was able to get by with that smaller converter. We ran a 3000 stall in there. But somebody's out there getting excited. But we ran a 3000 stall in there, and uh, we kind of had a feeling it was blowing through that converter. Maybe something was wrong with it. So we stuck this other converter in here, which was the 2500 stall. And, you know, the car left all right because it built, it, it built enough power leaving the line that it would still it would still get up out of there and still ran halfway decent 60 foot times. We knew that one needed a little bit more converter, but that cam, the power band on that cam was like 3000 to 7000. So we was able to get away with it. Well, now when we put this other motor in there, of course, it's running a different cam. And if we looked up the numbers on that cam, its power band was 45 to 85. So we knew by putting the 2500 stall in there that the thing was going to be doggy off the, out of the hole. But I had no idea it was going to be that doggy. So I had to make a converter change. So that cam was recommending a 5000 or higher stall. So we called the guys. It FTI. FTI, right there. Remember, it's not cheating. It's a competitive edge. Now, I'm not by no means sponsored by them. They didn't give me nothing. But we talked to them. We gave them the uh, horsepower of the car, the cam specs, rear end gear, tire size, weight of the car. And uh, we gave them all them numbers. And they decided we needed to go with a 6,000 stall. So, seems like a lot, doesn't it? Seems like a lot to me. But, you know, I don't know everything. I figure they knew more than I did. You know why? Because they have the 1-800 number. So we decided, hey, we're going to listen to them and do that. So they sent us a stall. They sent us a 6,000 stall. And a cool thing is you get one exchange. So if you put this in you don't like it, you can send it back. And they'll make you another one. Because they custom built these for they custom built this for the car. So... We're going to stick that converter in there, see if we can get this thing to leave out of the hole. Now, it left out of the hole like a dog, but on the big end, whenever we get up to about 5,000 RPM, the car would really start pulling, and it would pull all the way up to about 8,000, maybe a little over, and then when I shift, it just kind of bogged back down. That's why it's kind of important to get your combinations right. We knew the 2,500 stall wasn't going to be right, but we thought maybe, just maybe we could get some passes on it and uh, get it by, but it was wrong. So, we're going to change the stall in this thing, take it out and try it again, and see what happens. 
So today, I don't know if you guys have ever changed a, a converter, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to put the converter in. I've already pulled the transmission out, and uh, I'll show you how to do it. Okay, as you can see, I got transmission fluid all over the floor. No, I didn't drain the fluid out of the transmission. <laughs> so I just put that in. This stuff costs money, guys. So we got your new converter. And uh, I've already put a quart, of, a quart of transmission fluid in it. So we don't have to worry about that. Because I don't really want to start it up dry. Then what you want to do is we're going to take just a smidgen of transmission fluid. You can see I got it all over this rag. And wipe it around this. Just so we don't mess up that seal putting it in. Now, I know some guys put grease on those. I don't recommend it. Because it could, could keep your seal from uh, sealing on there. Alright, so we want to lift this up in there. Get it there. Okay, now we've got to be able to turn that to line these splines up. And you'll hear it pop. See, there was one. But I can still get my hands behind there, so we know that's not far enough. There was two. Okay, I can still get my hands behind there, so it's not far enough. I've seen some guys say, once you get two clicks, it's in. But we're going for three. Because we want to make sure that that converter is in that front pump. Just want to turn it clockwise and kind of put some pressure on it. Wiggle it around. Okay. Maybe it did only need two clicks. Oh yeah, we're we're back there in the back. Okay. Maybe I lied on the three click deal. Okay. Won't be the first time. We're just going to work it a little bit to make sure. That yeah, sounds pretty solid. So, I'm going to say, yeah, if I feel the snap back there, we're in. Uh, just to double check, you can take you a flat edge, put across your bell housing there like this. Get it where one of your tabs we you can burn bolts up where it's up there and get a tape measure and you should have about an inch it should be recessed in there an inch and we are exactly just a hair over one inch so we're gonna call that good now it's about ready to go in the car the only problem is see we're going to have to roll this thing around and stuff when we get it underneath the car. And you don't want that converter to slide out on you. Because once you're underneath there, that could be a problem. So, if you're like me and you don't have all the latest and greatest fancy tool and gadgets, here's what I do. I just take a wrench. I'm using a three-quarter. And I'm nutting a bolt, I mean a, a bolt with a big washer. And if we just stick it through there, we can put the nut on the back side here I'm doing this blindly so I can't see I think I got it started put a nut on there and we'll get a wrench and tighten that down let's uh, hold that right up there where you want it well it helps if you have three hands but we're gonna get it I promise and just snug it down. It don't have to be real tight, but, you know, get it where it's not going to come out. And there you go. That torque converter is going nowhere. You can flip it up on the end if you want. Then once you get it on your, you get it on your jack, get it up there close to where you want it. You can pull that out, get that wrench out of the way, and go ahead and stab your transmission. Just a little trick that I've uh, kind of picked up over the years. So, I'm going to get this transmission in. And once I do, I'm going to, we'll uh, turn the camera back on. I've got one more thing I want to show you.
Okay, well, we got it all bolted in. It's bolted up, sitting on the cross member, so it's everywhere that it should need to go. Now, if you remember, we changed the torque converter. I'm trying to get under here so I can show you guys something. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. But you can see we got our torque converter here. It's spinning. It spins free. So what we want to do is uh, it'll push out. It'll push in. Now the snout on that, I forgot. I didn't. I didn't show you guys that. But up inside there, the snout where it goes up inside to the uh, <sighs> crankshaft. I like to put a little wheel bearing grease on there. Not a lot. Just smear a little bit there because. That thing needs to move in and out. I mean, when under torque and stuff, and you don't want it getting rusty. But you got a gap right in between here. In between, let's move down to this one. In between where your torque converter and your flywheel is. And we're good there. You don't want, uh, you got, uh, oh, let me think here, 3 sixteenths and 1 eighth. You want it in between that. I made a little Allen wrench thing here. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing here because I'm under the car. But if you look, I can't get the 1 8 in there. It just won't go. I mean, the 3 16s, it won't go. But if I turn to the 1 8, it goes in there uh, really good. So you don't want it any tighter then uh, one eighth, there it is. You don't want it any tighter than one eighth. I mean, you don't want any closer and you don't want the gap bigger than uh, three sixteenths. If it is, you can always put washers in there. You can shim that up just by putting washers in there. It'll be good. So as you can see, we got about everything done. I need to finish hooking up the transmission lines, the trans brake, the shifter cable, bolt the torque converter in, put the drive shaft in, and let's get out from under here. And boy, I'm a mess there. Uh, I got cut up a little bit, but you can't work on a car without getting cut. So, I mean, hey, <laughs> I mean, what can I say? Transmission's back in again for about the uh, fourth time this year, fourth, fifth time. But, okay, well, we're going to finish that up, but not tonight. I'm going to do that tomorrow because uh, I've got a full-time job that I have to work too. So I'm going to go in and take a shower and uh, get that done. So, uh, but, you know, it went in pretty smooth. We put it in with my homemade transmission jack. Uh, I, I showed a video on how to build one of those. If you guys look through my videos, you can find that. Uh, it's been working good. So, that's it to me, for me tonight from Rusted Wrench Garage. Give me a thumbs up and please subscribe. Please, it's it's hot out here working on this stuff, you know. Uh, hopefully you all appreciate it and you're learning something. And please, we get a lot of views and not a lot of subscribers, but we did finally break 70. I'm excited about that. So, hit that subscribe button and uh, we're going to make more content. So, for Doug with Rusted Wrench Garage. Till next one. Thanks for watching.